Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at this 2015 BMW X5 and today's review is taking place at Martin Riley BMW Mini and Hyundai situated in Karoor just outside the town of Sligo. For all contact information regards to this dealership please see the description box below. So in today's review we'll be looking at the interior of the car, I'll explain how all the features work, we'll also start up, look at the engine, go over to the performance data and take a look around the exterior. I see the design key fob. So you got the four electric window controls, and you got this button here for power folding and exterior mirrors, and then this button here for opening and closing the tailgate, as well as the lock and unlock buttons. as well as a full electric driver's seat. So the X5 has a completely keyless ignition, so I'll just keep the keys in my pocket. And off the side here, you've got your engine start-stop button, as well as the economy mode start-stop system. Press the button once to turn on the auxiliary power. And just apply the foot brake and hold in the button to turn on the engine. So this car has the three spoke leather wrap multifunction steering wheel with electric rack and pinion power assist. Excellent feedback and you got your very nice 10 and 2 notches up here as well. And you got your main standard controls on the steering wheel for your cruise control on the left and then some of your truck computer controls as well as radio controls and voice command on the right. And of course this car does have the iDrive system, got a very big screen as well, excellent in size. And then down here you got your main iDrive controls, you got the main dial here for scrolling and selecting and then you got a few buttons here for the radio, the telephone and the main menu. So we'll just go through it quickly, right now it's got multimedia highlighted so this is things like the CD player, the auxiliary and USB plugins. If we go into the radio and select that, I'll just turn up the volume. You can go through the AM and FM frequencies and your save stations, sound quality is actually very good from it. So if I just go back now, you got different menus here for the navigation, the telephone, your contacts when you have your phone Bluetooth to the car, uh, the online services and the connected drive. You can even access BMW's hotline. And then from that you got the main vehicle information. And if we go into settings, you can adjust just about every aspect of the car. So you got your touchpad, the sound, speed, climate control settings, light settings, the Eco Pro mode, just about everything you could need. Now I want to demonstrate the sat nav in this car, but unfortunately, as I'm about to show you now, when I click into it, you need something called a activation code. Now I asked one of the salesmen if I could have the activation code to type it in. Um, unfortunately, when they order in a brand new car with sat nav, they don't actually get the activation code until a customer has bought it. So. Um, I thought it was just going to be a simple matter of, oh, you know, it's written on a piece of paper that came with the car and I type it in. Apparently the um, salesman would have to contact the home office in Germany and it would take a couple of hours for them to get the sat nav uh, code. So fortunately we don't have it, but I, what I will do is today I was reviewing a BMW 640 diesel Grand Coupe. So I'm going to switch over now to some footage to talk of that, demonstrating its sat nav because it was activated. The satellite navigation because I'm actually very impressed with this system. If I click navigation on the uh, iDrive system or I can use this button here, whichever. Move into the sat nav. So uh, this is a very cool feature. If I go to destination input and let's say I want to type in a street. So I want to go to let's say Dublin. I can type it in using the wheel or you can actually use the touchpad here and uh, draw it in. Uh, this touchpad is kind of new to me so let's hope I get it right. So P. Oh, well, that's a P. <laughs> As I said, it is kind of new technology. I'll make a D out of it. D. U. U. And a 
let's see, I'm trying to get a B here. You get used to that for a while. And there you go, it says Dublin Road, so I can set that as my destination. So it's nice and very easy to use. Now if you don't want to use the touch screen, as I said, you can of course go through it using the wheel itself. So back again, we'll actually take a look at the map itself. So let's scroll down here. Very big map. You can scroll in and out. So if I click left with the wheel, you get all these different sub menus. So we're going to, let's say, look at the map use. So three different sections here, north orientated, like we have at the moment, and direction of travel, and perspective, which is actually one of the nicest. Gives you a much clearer view, I think. And you got your interactive map, traffic information, points of interest, and routes, spoken instructions, and guidance. So there you go, it's actually a very nice system and easy to use and you can also save your trips, go to your address book, points of interest and so on and so forth. And also coming down here you've got your climate control, so you can adjust the temperature individually for the driver and passenger sides, very nice LED screen. And then you've got your standard controls here for the air conditioning, fan speeds, front and rear defrost and so on. You've also got three stage heated seats indicated by these very nice green LEDs for the driver and passenger sides. And then down here you got your main CD player and preset stations. Down here you got your two integrated cup holders. And behind that you got your uh, cigarette lighter and ashtray. And then coming into the center console itself, you got these controls here, so you can turn off your tracks control. You can also do the hill descent. You can just activate and deactivate that as you wish. And you also got your park and sense controls. And then you have these two buttons here, so you can completely set the car up how you want. You can put it in Sport Plus. Sport, Comfort and Eco Pro mode, basically the most economical setting for the car. So if I put on Sport Plus for example, it comes up here on the screen, if I just push down on the iDrive wheel, it gives me another screen here, so you can look at your power and torque, if I just hit the accelerator, that looks really cool, so it does, very nice feature to add into the car. And this car also has the 8-speed Sport Automatic Transmission. So you press the button on the left here, and you can navigate between Drive, Neutral, and Reverse. Let me put it in Reverse, it doesn't have a backup camera, but these guidance lines do come up. And then putting it into Drive again, if you knock it over to the left, you can shift gears manually using the gear stick itself, or you can use the Sports Paddle Shifters mounted on the back of the steering wheel. The right one shifts up, and the left one shifts down. So I just knock it out of that. Press P to put it in park. Uh, you also got an electronic parking brake as well as the auto hold assist. You also got a tiny storage area there. And you got two uh, center armrests here that open individually. Good deep storage as well. And you got your auxiliary and USB plugins down there as well as a 12 volt power clip. This car also has the ivory white leather interior. Looks really nice. And also up here, the silver trim is called Oxide Silver. And below that, you got a bit of black piano veneer finish. Very nice combination. The ivory white really does brighten up the interior. Looks very nice. Vanity mirrors. Also illuminated. And you got your microphone up here for the Bluetooth. And this car also has an auto dimming interior mirror. And also there is one more feature I should show you with the iDrive system, I nearly forgot about it there. You'll notice this button here underneath the hazard indicator, so if I press it, it highlights green. This here is called the Intelligent Safety, now this is a, a very customizable feature. When it's highlighted green, it means all on. If I press it and it highlights orange, it means individual. So using the iDrive wheel, you can scroll up here and you can turn things on and off, so you can activate and deactivate the front end uh, collision warning. The pedestrian alert, you can turn that on and off, and the lane departure warning. And also when the lane departure warning is on, um, there you go, the orange lines show up there and they'll let you know if you go out of line. So the best thing really, or the safest thing to do is actually just to keep them all on, so that there's when the well, circles illuminate a green, always handy to have it on. So let's go ahead and check out the back seats.
legroom back here is very good. You also got storage pockets in the back of each front seat. And headroom is excellent as well. Got excellent all around rear visibility. Center mounted armrest with two cup holders. And also I believe the center seat itself folds flat. Very handy pass through into the boot itself. And also all these seats can manually be adjusted. So underneath here there is a black handle. And you can slide the seat forwards and backwards. Coming into the center, you got your rear ventilation, a couple of storage shelves, as well as a cigarette lighter. So we'll just turn on the vehicle's power. Also turn on the headlights, front and rear fog lamps, and the hazards. And all four windows are fully automatic. And we'll take a look around the exterior. The exterior color is called Space Grey. It has bag Xenon projector headlamps with LED daylights and LED angel eye lights as standard, along with chrome surrounds for the signature BMW kidney grill. It also features these 18 inch double spoke light alloy wheels. It also features an independent McPherson strut front suspension and a multi link rear suspension. It also has four wheel ventilated steel disc brakes. Coming around to the rear, the X5 has LED taillights, dual stainless steel exhaust tips, and parking sensors. Boot space in the X5 is excellent. It can accommodate up to 650 litres of room and even more than that with the rear seats folded and it also comes with the removable cargo cover. This car is also the 7 seater which has the third row seats folded which creates a completely flat floor. This car also has the soft close split tailgate. By pressing the button on the upper half it will close automatically provided the bottom bench is properly closed. Also as I mentioned at the start of the video the tailgate can be opened and closed via the button on the driver's side door as demonstrated. The overall length for the X5 is 192.4 inches. It has a width of 76.3 inches and a height of 69.4 inches. The total wheelbase is 115.5 inches. The X5 is BMW's main luxury 4x4 and it competes against similar SUVs such as the Volkswagen Touareg, the Audi Q7 and the Porsche Cayenne. This model is known as the F15 and is the third generation which came out in 2014. There are many options available for the X5. It can be had as a 5-seater, a 7-seater and can also be had with BMW's all-wheel drive x -Drive system or as a rear-wheel drive with a variety of petrol and diesel engines. It can also be had with two transmissions, a 6-speed automatic or an 8-speed ZF 8HP automatic like we have in this model. This car specifically is the S-Drive 25D SE. To break that down, S-Drive stands for the rear-wheel drive. 25D refers to the 2 litre diesel engine and the SE is simply the trim level. This car is also finished with the matte aluminium window frames and the roof rails and is considered the more basic model of the X5 range. It also has the servotronic electric steering which I touched on earlier. The servotronic basically adjusts the weight of the steering field depending on the vehicle's current speed. The X5 normally has its model designation at the bottom of the front door, but as can be seen in this particular car, it's an option which you can choose not to have applied to your vehicle. This is located on the driver's side footwell. The engine is a 2 litre 4 cylinder twin turbo diesel. It produces 214 brake horsepower with a top speed of 137 miles per hour. It also puts out 332 foot pounds of torque and can get about 50 miles to the gallon. Also, this is the first time ever BMW have put a four cylinder engine in an X5. So let's part on the X5 and see how it sounds.
so we're just going to finish up the review now. The BMW X5 is a very nice car, and as I was saying, it's BMW's main luxury 4x4. It looks very nice on the inside, it's very well equipped, and the iDry system is very nice to use. Now, this is the first ever X5, also, as I was saying, to feature a twin turbo four cylinder diesel engine. Now, this is going to be a lot more economical than the X5 used to be. It also weighs less than the older X5s. So, uh, I reckon this uh, four cylinder diesel is probably going to be one of the most popular choices here in Ireland, anyway. We get very good fuel mileage, and the real tax should be quite low on it as well. So everyone, I hope you enjoyed this film that tour of the all-new 2015 BMW X5. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe, and please stay tuned. There'll be plenty more videos to come. Thanks for watching, everyone.